Hi, welcome to Health Talk with Dr. Akram. I am Akram. In this program, we'll be talking about all kinds of different health issues with different experts in the field. Today, I will be talking about variolation, the precursor to vaccination. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your time with us. At a lecture in Boston, early 1721, Cotton Mather, a Christian minister, announced the coming of destroying angel, a terrifying disease. England was already devastated by then. The world had faced its dreadful effect for the past 200 years, in some places wiping entire Native American colonies. The destroying angel appeared as few red spots on your face and you wished it was chicken pox. But the spots spread around in hundreds, harden, ripen and the pustules filled with fluid appeared like volcanic eruptions. The pustules blocked your nose. You struggled to breathe. It burst in your face and the flesh rotten. If you managed to survive, you ended up being blind or your face was completely disfigured. That April, smallpox swept around Boston. People were ignorant, but three unlikely heroes took up the fight that year. The African-born slave Onesimus, Zabdiel Boyston, a physician, and Cotton Mather, a Puritan minister. Mather had lost two wives and 13 of his 15 children to infectious disease. He had his homework done and on the emerging idea of medicine. It was Onesimus who told Mather that method of preventing smallpox in Africa, he showed him his scars. But Cotton Mather was also hearing about Lady Montego who had brought variolation to England that time. Lady Mary Montego had lost her brother to the devastating disease. Soon afterwards, she also contracted smallpox. Although she survived, she was left with severe facial scarring. While in Turkey as the British ambassador's wife, she came across the process of variolation as it was introduced and published in Istanbul by two doctors, Emmanuel Timoni and Jacob Pilarino. She first mentioned variolation in the famous letter to her friend Sarah Chiswell in April 1717, in which she enthusiastically recounted the process which in Istanbul was most commonly administered by experienced elderly women. Did you ever want to study abroad? but don't know where to start, then look no further because IES got you covered with dozens of universities and courses ready for your choosing. You too can earn a world-class degree for an affordable price. In your time, indulge yourself in the rich and magnificent cultures of Bulgaria and Romania without any worries because IES will help you every step of the way from visa application to legalization of documents and more. For further information and inquiries, contact us now. International Admission Services, making dreams come true since 2012. Variolation was the method of inoculation first used to immunize individuals against smallpox and again it was called variola. With material taken from a patient or recently variolated individual in the hope that the mild but protective infection would result. The procedure was most commonly carried out by inserting, rubbing, powdered smallpox scabs or fluid from pustules into superficial scratches made in the skin. The patient would develop pustules identical to those caused by naturally occurring smallpox, usually producing a less severe disease than naturally acquired smallpox. Eventually, after about two to four weeks, these symptoms would subside, indicating successful recovery and immunity. The method was first used in China, India, and 
the Middle East before it was introduced into England and North America in the 1720s in the face of some opposition. The method is no longer in use today. It was replaced by smallpox vaccine, a safer alternative. This in turn led to the development of the many vaccines now available against other diseases. In 1718, Lady Mary had the procedure conducted on her five-year-old son, Edward Montagu. The procedure was supervised by the embassy doctor, Charles Maitland. On her return to England, she had a four-year-old daughter variolated in the presence of physicians of the royal court in 1721. Both variolations proved successful. Later on the year, Maitland conducted an experimental variolation of six prisoners in Newgate Prison in London. In the experiment, six condemned prisoners were variolated and later exposed to smallpox with the promise of freedom if they survived. The experiment was a success and soon variolation was drawing attention from the royal family who helped promote the procedure throughout England. The Chinese practiced the oldest documented use of variolation dating back to the 15th century. They implemented a method of nasal insufflation administered by blowing powdered smallpox material, usually scabs, up the nostril. The technique used scabs that had been left to dry out for some time. Three or four scabs were ground into powder or mixed with a grain of musk and bound in cotton. In fact, material was then packed into a pipe and puffed up the patient's nostril. The blowpipe used during the procedure was made of silver. India has also been suggested as another possible origin for the spread of variolation into Europe, particularly the Ottoman Empire and Wales. There are two accounts from the 18th century of inoculation being performed by Brahmins. The doctors who performed this procedure were known as tikadas. The term tikka is still in use now to mean vaccination in many Indian languages. Similar methods were seen through the Middle East and Africa. Two similar methods were described in Sudan during the late 18 and early 19 centuries. Both had been long established and stemmed from Arabic practices. Tishteri el Jideri, buying the smallpox, was a practice seen within the women of Sena in central Sudan. A mother of an unprotected child would visit the house of newly infected child and tie a cotton cloth around the ailing child's arm. She would then bid the child's mother over the cost of each pastille. When a bargain was stuck, the woman would return home and tie the cloth around her own child's arm. The second method was known as Duck El Jedri, hitting the smallpox, a method similar to that used in the Ottoman Empire and eventually transported into England. Fluid was collected from a small pustule and rubbed into a cut made into the patient's skin. This practice spread more widely through Africa. It may have also traveled with merchants and pilgrims along the Middle Eastern caravan route into Turkey and Greece. If you look at the history of vaccination in the USA, none of those three men who introduced variolation to North America won much honor. Onesimus disappeared from the records once he purchased freedom. The African contribution to the precursor of vaccination fades out of history. Zabdiel Boyston and Cotton Mather also got forgotten by history. But the effect of variolation did not stop here. In 1757 in Berkeley, Gloucestershire, a sleepy little town in the United Kingdom, a small boy of eight underwent variolation. It was a miserable experience for him as English doctors at that time, bound by tradition, demanded preparatory bloodletting, almost until he fainted to 
purifies blood. But when that little boy himself became a doctor, he noticed that milkmaids had never developed dangerous smallpox. That led to him to realize cowpox, a similar variant to smallpox, can be preventive to smallpox. And he proved it by variolating an eight-year boy, his gardener's son, James Phipps, from materials from a young woman infected with cowpox. It was the beginning of modern vaccination. The term coined from Latin vaca for cow, so vaccination. The doctor was no one else than Edward Jenner, who pioneered the concept of vaccines, including creating the smallpox vaccine, the world's first vaccine. Smallpox continued to kill people. An estimated 300 million people died in the 20th century alone. In May 1980, the World Health Organization announced that smallpox had been declared eradicated from the world thanks to the massive vaccination process and thanks to Edward Jenner. Now, we all are eagerly waiting for the vaccine to treat COVID-19, but it is paramount for us to understand the history of vaccine. What is vaccine? How does it help us to fight organisms which harm our body, such as smallpox, polio, tuberculosis, measles, mumps, rubella, and dozen other flu vaccines. Keep an eye on our special TV program, Vaccination, on INTV Health Talk with Dr. Akram on 12 November 2020 from 20.30 to 21.30 United Kingdom time, Sky Channel 782 or INTV. Or our dedicated YouTube channel, Health Talk with Dr. Akram. In case if you haven't subscribed so far, don't miss out, subscribe now to be updated. Thank you for staying with us on Health Talk with Dr. Akram. If you have any further questions, please message us on our dedicated YouTube channel, Health Talk with Dr. Akram, or Facebook, or Twitter, or Instagram, and we will respond as soon as we can. But for now, goodbye and keep yourself safe.